Hi guys, it's Belle here for my second week of um, October Daily uh, spreads for the prompts. Um, I have nearly finished week three, so that video should be up in the next couple of days because I know we're already in the third week, almost, or we are, of October. So as you can see, I tried to keep this book flatter than my previous ones. It That's not the case anymore. Um, I don't even know if I'll get to use the third signature. I was going to remove it, but that third signature actually has book pages. Anyway, it's a whole thing. It doesn't matter if I don't use it all because it's my journal. Um, so if you don't know already, um, I am doing an October daily. This is my third year of doing one and I'm using the prompts created by Pink Oddbird and, um, others. And the, the Pink Oddbird prompts, I will leave a link to her video down below I do have an October daily playlist and I will leave the week one flip through in the cards somewhere um, here so you can check my week one out so we finished on day seven which was here and now we're on day eight and day eight's prompt was create a page of goblins in the moonlight um I'm not sure how I feel about this page I like it but then I, I I'm not sure anyway so I did some distressing and some water colouring on the back of the page and um, did some water splodges to give like a star type effect. I had this moon cut out. This is a paper cobweb doily that I used. I had these goblins. I cut them from a book that I have. Um, and I really wanted to use them. And when I actually saw them, I thought, well, because of the way they're kind of drawn, they look like they're falling or they're trapped, which gave me the idea of trapping them in this giant spider web, almost like they're in the Forbidden Forest of um, that particular, you know, Harry Potter esque world and they're caught and in fact I've glued them in places I've trapped them under certain bits but I've left other bits free to give that illusion of them kind of being free but being stuck and not able to get out just put the word goblin there and if anyone's watched the previous video I did say that um, Pink Odd Bird has done created cut aparts that you can cut apart and um, put on your pages so you know what the prompts were and I'm trying to use them but I'm trying to kind of hide them on the pages I don't know it's something it's almost like a game I'm playing with myself anyway so the prompt is actually down here but you can barely see it because the prompts themselves are blacks and purples the backgrounds and that kind of blends in with the whole thing so I really like that Day nine was create a page of Halloween masks. So as I'm trying to use photos and sometimes in my creative spreads in this book, I um, took some photos of myself in some Halloween masks. Uh, and, you know, I did a very simple layout. But this layout really reminds me of when I used to kind of make scrapbooks or like uh, journals from maybe 10 years ago it's that kind of layout with um, paper blocking and you know embellishments and the way the photos are laid out uh, which I've matted onto black card and stitched around I've used this dimensional boo um, that has double meaning um, and there's these glittery dimensional foam stars I had this screen mask sticker and it just says costume here. And on this one, the only place I could think of putting the prompt was down the side there. Day 10 was um, create your own Halloween poem centered around trick-or-treaters. So I did this double spread. I have this really fun, bright um, collection by Doodlebug, their Halloween collection, which I can't remember the name of. And I thought, as a lot of the other pages have been the usual kind of Halloween colours, I'd do a bit something a bit fun, you know. Uh, so I had this Halloween bag uh, that I stuck down, and actually it's in amongst the fold here, where the actual prompt is hidden. I uh, used one of my gnome. This was perfect for one of the gnome pieces from the, like, the gnomes for halloween collection the bits that i picked up if you've seen that haul video which i love use the dimension word saying candy lots of little stickers and then it used the belly band and there's a journaling card in here attached with this little paper clip that reminded me of the kind of shape of a candy corn 
It's got a fabric tab with a Tim Holtz metal word embellishment saying trick or treat and this fun pumpkin bell, little trick or treater there. This poem, um, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm happy with it, but I really struggled with this poem. It, it's strange what you struggle with. So, knock, 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 who's at the door? A witch, a ghost or monsters galore. Trick or treat, they sing together, then stick out their bags and stand there eager. Trick or treat, they sing again. Bring out the candy or feel the pain. Sugar, chocolate, gummies and sweets, all the good stuff kids love to eat. It's Halloween night, trick or treat is galore, but be sure to check before you open that door. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's a simple poem, but it works and yeah. So that is day uh, 10. Day 11, so I, I used a different page and there was a reason for that. So day 11 <clears throat> was Jeepers Creepers, where'd you get those peepers? Fill this page with spooky, oogly, googly eyes. I just have to say right now, Jeepers Creepers is one of those horror movies that has stuck with me since watching it. It freaks me out. I don't even like saying the word. <laughs> so, mm. April, this was a difficult one. <laughs> so, um, I didn't fill it completely with oogly googly eyes. I used a background paper that has lots of weird spooky eyes on it and almost looks like it would glow in the dark. I did use some googly eyes that are very dimensional. I hope that's picking up and they do move. Um, yep. Yeah, so, and then I stapled the number on there and then it says eek in this um glittery foam words got the cute mummy there and then this um again is another paper of oogly googly eyes i think i actually got this paper from you april i think you actually sent it with something um a couple of years ago anyway <laughs> and i've used one of priscilla from Reese crafting's words that says my eyes beheld an eerie sight and then this opens up it's magnetized and then underneath it says, I'm watching you. And that's where I've put the quote. And then you've got these foam, oogly googly, well, foam eyes that I've used brads to really make the eyeballs pop. Um, but yes, I'm watching you. I thought that was quite funny. It made me laugh anyway. So that was day 11. Day 12, we go back a page. Day 12 was, you're a chef, create a meal for Frankenstein's monster. So I went back a page because this page actually has Frankenstein's monster on it. So I wanted this to be the page I use. This is actually really simple layout. It's probably one of the simplest. I've made a double pocket. I've used some stickers that from my wonderful friend, um, Anna, who actually sells these in her shop. I will leave the link down below. This is from her Dracula collection. I've used some book page, some lovely um, like um, enamel dots. So I had this in my stash. I wanted to use it. It says Frankenbash, Mr. Monster, uh, for Mr. Monster at Castle Dracula. Date the 12th of October, because this is the 12th month. Time, 8.30 p.m. Be there or be scared. And then I wrote a bit about this prompt on the back. So I actually made a full menu. So for the Frankenbash menu, for starters, you'd have pumpkin soup with dipping toasties. The main would be a mushroom wellington with seasonable roast vegetables and a herby gravy. And for dessert, you'd have river mud pie with a side of seasonal berries and pistachio ice cream. <laughs> So I did this on my computer, printed it on some tea stain paper, then did some stamping. I really like how that turned out. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware, but um, Frankenstein's monster is supposed to, he doesn't say he's vegetarian, but he says he prefers to live off the nuts and berries that grow in these tried meat once, but he prefers nuts, berries and things like that. So even though it says toasties, I wanted it to be a kind of vegan vegetarian menu. Uh, just with a play on the words um, so you know and then oh and back here so this is actually something again my friend Anna did so it's a bit of wool so I wanted it to look like the castle wool eat drink and be scary and then you know just as oh and the prompt is hidden actually in here 
not sure if you can see that. Let me lift that up. The prompt's hidden inside. Um, there. I'm having so much fun hiding these prompts or making them fit on the page. <laughs> Just another aspect. So when you go to a restaurant, a meal, sometimes you come away with a doggy bag. So um, I use this for the bats because he's having dinner at Castle Frankenstein. And in here is some of the desserts he's bringing home. So again, these are from my friend Anna. Um, I don't know if she sells these particular ones in her shop, but a few years ago she was. These are some of her drawings and they're lots of really cute um, sort of spooky foods. And I had lots of fun just inking and spraying. And I thought, you know, that definitely looks like it could be the mud pie, river mud pie with the eye cream because it's got eyes in it. Obviously, they're fake eyes. They're, they're eye substitutes. <laughs> so that is his doggy bag that he is taking home with him to continue eating. So that was day 12. <clears throat> oh, and on that day as well, I think it was on the 12th, Every year, me and my two friends, Anna and Sarah, they both have Instagram accounts and um, are on YouTube. We do a 13-day Halloween advent swap where we, we basically try and make as many of the gifts as possible. Um, the last few years, I think it's been almost exclusively made, handmade gifts. I, I do have a playlist for that. Um, and I do do my own videos where I show you what I make them and what I receive. Anyway, um, Sarah's box with all her Advent goodies arrived. Um, so excited. It just looks so beautiful, Sarah, when I opened it. Loved it. She sent other goodies in there as well, not just them. So I just did a spread here, pocket, uh, uh, turn backward in time in your flight, make me a child again just for tonight. And it made me think of when we do this Advent, we do get that kind of childlike feel. Anyway, and then there's a pocket back here with, um, this is actually, I believe, her artwork. I'm pretty sure it's her artwork. It looks like yours, Sarah. Correct me if I'm wrong down below. And this is the letter she sent me. So I put it in there. I'll put it back in a minute. And then I took a picture. And this sticker was so much fun. She put this in the box. But it says, warning, opening this package will cause extreme happiness. So anyway, that arrived that day. Let's get on with prompt 13. Prompt 13. You are trapped in a scary movie. What is your weapon and your plan to survive to the end? So if I was trapped in a scary movie as a human, it would have to be a vampire movie. Um, they're my favourite kind of movies. Obviously, I would rather be the vampire. But so this page, I wanted it to kind of have um, an old feel to it. Um, so I used some pages from a Dracula book that I tea stained. I found this image online that says vampire hunting kit and it has all the weapons I would need to survive. There's a stake as well. And then I had a vampire um, coloring book and it has one of these bits in it, how to destroy a vampire. So I wanted to put that. I used the stamp with the vampire teeth. I used some stamps to give um, cobwebs. This was also an image for the vampire coloring book that I had. And it's really good because it's got the knife in the throat. <laughs> <laughs> it's got the stake in the heart just to make doubly sure you understand stake and behead them and probably burn them um i use some words so there's dracula here there's a vampire here obviously i did a coffin use some more of the book page and up here there's a little bat at the top of the coffin and that is actually where i hid the prompt behind there but all you can see i can't get it in now it's on the page all you can see, I say again, is the bat. Oh, it will go down. Um, and then behind this Dracula picture, I actually used another stamp, put the word bloodbath, and then wrote about that if I was in a scary movie, fighting vampires, I would have the complete kit. I would not go out and fight them anywhere near when it's supposed to get dark or on an eclipse. I'd make sure it's first thing in the morning when the sun is nice and bright and those vampires are sleeping. I would wear a full metal kind of mesh armor thing to prevent them biting me anywhere. Or do we want to get bitten and turned? Anyway, but if I was trying to survive, I would not go off with some random dude. <laughs> I would keep fully stocked at all times, hidden around my person. Um, and that is how I would survive the vampire movie. And then I've got a tab here. Uh, which is some skull fabric. And on there, I've got a little bottle that says, oh, it's fallen off because I've still got to glue it on. 
Um, it says holy water and then there's a cross in black and red. Um, so this page I'm still working on. This is actually my books, what I'm reading this October. So that's a picture of my TBR that I've stitched behind vellum. You can actually see the book pages if you push the vellum down or the books. And then in here is an index card with the books I've read and I've made a border of um, tea stained book pages. I probably will put a charm on there. Anyway, last one, day 14. Grave robbers, someone has stolen your most precious item from your grave. What would make you rise from the dead to get it back? Now, I wanted to make this a bit fun. I don't know. Uh, some of these prompts I'm trying to make that make me laugh because, you know, let's face it, the last year and a half has been challenging. So obviously, seriously, if think someone's going to steal something from my grave, it would be something very personal. Um, and this is kind of personal, but not to the level you know like something to do with my children or something like that anyway so I wanted to make this fun so I love how this page turned out I did a coffin in the middle oh gosh they're my other prompts now let's get these out I did a coffin in the middle but I'm really hoping it picks up I actually painted but used textured paint I hope that's picking up and I've done it so that I've done it in different shades of brown, a bit of black, some green. I wanted it to look like my coffin was lying in the open dirt, like someone had literally dug up my grave and my coffin's lying there open. Um, I really, I mean, I love the texture of it. I love how it turned out. I love how the coffin looks. There's obviously my skeletal body coming out of the coffin. And then this, oh, and this is all embossed as well see if that picks up this is all embossed and it's using a purple shimmer gilding wax as well as a gold gilding wax and then I use gold on the die cut edges and then this opens up this time I used velcro because I just picked up this velcro and I wanted to try it out the prompts in there and so this worked perfectly for this page I have to say because right opposite we've got the mummy sarcophagus um, I also thought it was quite funny. It was toilet roll considering 2020. Um, so obviously the mummy um, pyramids that were always getting grave robbed and things. So it worked really well. Honestly, some of these pages have just been brilliant. Um, anyway, what I said was um, I love my cats and one in particular I lost a few years ago who um, was very special to me. And I have her ashes in a special container. And I've always said that, you know, when that day comes, um, that that is one of the things I would like put in my coffin to go with me. So any cat lovers out there or pet lovers out there will, I hope, understand the rest of you. Please don't judge me. Anyway, that is my tarragon, my cat tarragon. Um, so I said that that would make me wake that if someone broke into my coffin for my cat's ashes to use I don't know in some weird magical spell um that would wake me up and I'd have to go get her back and I had these stickers um very dimensional stickers I had these stickers of skeleton animals and so I put one of my cat and I put it actually on the other page because it worked really well so that is what would make me wake if someone dug me up from my slumber and stole the ashes of my sweet cat, Tarragon. And then just on this page, uh, this day, um, the other part of my advent from my friend Anna came. So I used one of her background papers. Again, you can find these in her shop. Um, and I made a vellum pocket that has shakers in it in all these lovely pastel. I hope you can see that colors it does shake I promise you it does shake <laughs> there we go <laughs> it's got little skulls in there lots of bright colors and this is one of her stickers that she sent me again it might be from her vampire sticker set and then this is one of her cards because she does do cards as well uh, this is one of her Norse ones and she just written um, there's her site because um, she has her own website as well as an Etsy store and um, that was the letter she wrote to me about our advent swap. So I'm going to put that in there. So that is it. I have done other pages. I actually decided to leave the last few pages of this blank. There's some pictures there because I might stick some pictures. And actually the next lot will start in our second signature. Creepy look. 
Um, so yeah, so that is my Halloween. Oh, I feel like I've been talking so much. My Halloween October daily spreads for days eight to fourteen using Pink Odd Birds um, prompts. Again, let me know what, what you think down below. I absolutely love how this page turned out. Let me know what you think down below. Um, and yeah, I'd really love to hear what you're up to this October. What kind of crafts are you getting? Are you getting up to? And um, and thank you very much for watching. I hope wherever you are in the world that you are having lots of spooky Halloween fun, my fellow spooky crafters. And I will be back again very soon with the next few pages so that I can actually catch up <laughs> for the final um, week. And um, until next time, guys. Bye.